I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I need glasses. He does actually. JT needs glasses for the first time in his thirty years of yep. life. I went to the doctor because I was, I went to the shooting range the other day, and the person I was shooting with uh, said uh, basically. Like, why are you missing so much? Because I, I I never miss usually like like at 50 yards. And I was using iron sights and I couldn't figure it out. And I used, uh, she said, move to the other eye. And I moved to the other eye and uh, I hit every single one in my non-dominant. And so I went to the, the Warby Parker and I need glasses now, y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it happens. Yeah. Dang. So you're going to see Also JT. staring at a computer screen all the time. That yeah, is that's, true. That's not yeah, a problem. Be good for it. Yeah, hopefully you got the blue light feature in your glasses. I sure did. I'm sure you did. I also they, have they it. They made me do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, JT uh, is going to have some cool new glasses coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll have to have a fashion show. I sure show. will next time you see me. That is true. First, we have a few announcements. Uh, so first off... September 26th, we got a big day happening. Big day, big day, y'all. Big, big day, big day. Big day. Big day. <laughs> um, so we have Tiff from Tiff's Ghost Talk on TikTok coming in. We're going to be doing uh, My Favorite Ghost Stories with her. Uh, so we're really excited to have her on board uh, Real for fast. that. Real fast, mm-hmm. that came about because a pair of junkie tagged us on TikTok, and I saw the tag, and... Um, and so shout out to that pair of junkie yeah. because they were like, oh, my gosh, you need to you need to do an episode with her. And I was like, OK, OK. And we yeah. made it happen. So we're going to be doing Making that. Making it happen. It's what um, I do. And then Produce. right afterwards, we're going to be having the women from the Hagland exorcism case on. Ooh. They are giving us their full story. Uh, and this is the first time they are telling the story without any kind of guidance or uh, manipulation to the story to fit a certain narrative or anything. So it's going to be very real, very uh, raw and unedited on that one. So it's going to be super cool. I'm very excited to hear their in experience uh, because I personally have never met anybody who has been through an exorcism in that way. So I am fascinated beyond belief uh-huh, to hear uh-huh. uh, their story. And then on October 3rd, we are going to be doing our interview with, and that's why we drink. So yes. they are taking some time out of their very busy schedule and their tour uh, to zoom in with us. And we're going to be talking about their book. We're going to be talking about their favorite ghost stories uh, as well. So it's definitely an episode you're not going to want to miss. We're going to be doing a live stream as well for the para junkies. So they will be able to enjoy that as it's happening. Um, and then October 9th, another big day. So that is the day that our first episode of JT and I spinoff from One to Wicked, uh, which is going to be our true crime spinoff. Uh, and we are going to be discussing the Leilani Simons case, which on October 9th, that is the first day uh, of her trial. And that is a huge case here in Savannah yeah. that happened recently. Uh, so we are going to be doing all of the the nitty gritty details on that and basically the concept we have five different categories of reasonings of why we're going to rank these stories uh from one to wicked and that's going to help you know uh formulate our final ranking and the pair junkies who are going to uh who live stream with us will be able to submit their rankings as well so it's going to be super cool very interactive on that one it's going to be then, awesome. And I would like to say this is an added show. This isn't going to replace any any episodes that we're doing for Most Haunted City on Earth. Uh, Most Haunted City on Earth will stay the exact same it is. It'll be full paranormal, all of that. This is just uh, feeding Madison and I's desire for true crime, which is ravenous. Which, honestly, to be honest with y'all, this is what we do in our free time anyway. Yes. Yeah. I just read to JT a bunch of true crime stories. Murder. So we figured we Constant. might as well film it. So... Amen. There you go. go. Um, but 
two more things. We want to thank some new para junkies. Um, again, uh, I'm sure you listened to the last episode. Please send me how to pronounce your name properly. But uh, Ka- Kahoka Loa, um, Nikki, Avalon, Carissa, Emmy, Prachi, Danny. Can I go back to sleep now? Daniel, Dally, and Nathan. So thank you guys thank so y'all. much for joining us over on the para junkie side. Um, and you guys are going to have lots of fun content coming to you. Then last announcement, we have new merch. I am currently wearing it. Huzzah. Huzzah. If y'all didn't know, I love drag queens. So this made my heart sing uh, because it is a plague doctor doing the death drop, uh, holding a rat. And it has the scientific name for the bubonic plague. Um, and this was designed by our very talented para junkie L. Uh, like I said in the last episode we filmed, this is probably my favorite design that L has ever made. Uh, so if you are interested in getting this, you can find it over on our website, hauntedcitypodcast.com, and go get you some plague doctor, uh, yassified plague doctor <laughs> um, woo, 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 merch. Indeed. Now you can get into the quirks of Savannah. We're going to talk about tree hole. Tree hole. So, uh, Tree Hole basically is this hole on Monterey Square. It is exactly what it sounds like. It is a hole uh, that is in the tree. And basically, I don't know who started this, but it you is. You know, it, I think it's one of those things that kind of just happens. Um, uh, and you can you can see it happening all over where people will, will, will leave a little item in various places. But it definitely feels like, uh, as you had mentioned, uh, a, a drastic fey trap. Be, 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 be mindful. <laughs> well, because people leave items in tree hole. And first off, the rule of thumb that is just widely accepted by everybody is you don't touch what's in tree hole. No. Which is a very fey like activity, if you ask me, because you don't touch offerings for fey. Although it seems to me that uh, with tree hole, um, if you bring something, you can trade it. Oh. Yeah, that's why it's always different. Right. Is if you if you bring something, you can trade what's in there. But if you're just going, don't touch it, don't don't take it, unless you have something to replace it replace with. Replace it with. I always thought tree hole just ended up eating the <laughs> <laughs> the no, offerings. Unfortunately, uh, my introduction to tree hole was a TikTok, uh, where somebody walked up with an item and did the Indiana Jones switch. Mm. <laughs> See. JT's the one who told me about it because didn't you learn about this in high school or something? Oh, yeah. Trio's been a thing for years. Forever. Yeah. 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 So, decades and decades. Yeah. And it's all sorts of random things. Yeah, that are classic in, trinkets and stuff. Yeah. Baseball cards, trinkets. Um, I've seen people leave peanuts in it. Food is probably not a great idea. <laughs> the squirrels will take it. Right. The squirrels in Savannah are very large, and they love peanuts. Um, they are thick squirrels. Yeah. But you're going to get a Boo Radley out there one day. Oh, no. For those To Kill a Mockingbird people who know mm-hmm. that Boo Radley would leave gum in the hole of the tree. Never mind. So there you go. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that's a good place to start. JT and I always like to walk by Tree Hole and see what's in it. We sure do. Um, so yeah, if you're ever in Savannah, go to Monterey Square, which is also a uh, pretty poppin' square historically. You know, yeah, absolutely. Beautiful you've got, square. You've got the Mercer Williams House. You've got the um, the Mikveh Israel, the Mikveh yeah. Israel Synagogue. You've got uh, you know Forsyth Park, literally one street over. You know, it, it's a lot going on in that square. And it also, oddly enough, that square at night. No matter how great the weather has been, it always seems a little foggy. It's a little misty. Uh-huh. It is. It is. And, you know, in the center is the Pulaski Monument, under which supposedly the remains of Pulaski. <laughs> All right, are. y'all. We're supposed to, it's supposed to be a non. It's not a ghost. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a ghost. It's, not a ghost. it's, 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 just, it's there. just a body. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? It's even weirder because they, they, they pulled the body I out of the it. monument and now it's under a slab. Because uh, there was some discrepancy it. as to whether or not uh, it was, in fact, Pulaski. I didn't say the ghost of Pulaski. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's a I little, could. Mi- little misty. <laughs> it's a little misty. A little yeah. foggy. And then Ooh, if, weird, you're, you know? if you walk <laughs> over to Forsyth Park um, from Monterey Square, you have to pass the Armstrong House. And that's true. Which has, 
in my opinion, some of the weirdest statues in Savannah because they are boars that are drooling. Um, <laughs> th- they literally have a drooling water feature. Drooling boars of Savannah. That's yeah. what I always called yeah. them because, you know, um, the boars literally have a water feature where it looks like they are drooling 24-7. And I'm like, oh, yeah. so they are uh, Hungry boars. Hungry for your flesh. Yes, or rabies. <laughs> You or, never or know. rabid, yeah. 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 Rabid boars. That's terrifying. That's even worse. <laughs> um, now, another one, since we're talking about statues and whatnot, um, if you go to, where is that, Chippewa Square, where um, Oglethorpe's statue is? Oh, yeah. First oh, yeah. off, didn't put his statue in Oglethorpe no, Square. No, for some that- reason, Oglethorpe is in Chippewa. And Pulaski isn't in Pulaski Square. He's in Monterey Square. We... Just mucked up the whole map. <laughs> <laughs> like Savanians do. Yeah. And if you go to look at uh, Oglethorpe's statue, he has an uncanny resemblance to Captain Morgan. He really does. It looks yeah, like a does. statue of Captain Morgan. Uh, and Which would like, track oh. for Savannah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, they love drinking so much. They've got a <laughs> giant statue of Captain Morgan right there. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's kind of fun to think that there was a time when wearing multiple layers of heavy brocade lace and long wig was the manliest thing you could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's even funnier that he looks like Captain Morgan because uh, Oglethorpe had certain prohibitions that right. he brought to the city when he was creating it, and one of which was no alcohol. That no didn't alcohol. work out. <laughs> he believed that it made men lazy. As a matter of fact, they were mm-hmm. all because he thought it made oh. people lazy. He thought that lawyers <laughs> made people lazy. He thought that slavery made people lazy. He thought that alcohol made people yeah. lazy. He's right on the third we, one. We won't even talk about the Irish, mm-hmm. which which he also mm-hmm. had a prohibition against. Wow. And Catholics. <laughs> and Catholics. <laughs> Holy crap. And really? lawyers. Yeah. The lawyers one I always thought was funny. Yeah. I agree with him on the alcohol. It does make yeah. people lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't stick, so... Uh, nonetheless, uh, so moving on, um, another metal feature that is in Savannah that is quite odd uh, was br- brought to us by Eni because Eni sent in some of her quirks that she feels like Savannah has. Um, and Eni said to mention the drainage yeah. um, systems on that are on a couple of the buildings in downtown that are supposed to be dolphins. They are not. They are not. They are they, definitely fish. Someone really <laughs> needs to talk to the uh, designer. And be like, dolphins don't have scales. Have you ever seen those um, like ceramic pitchers that are of fish, yeah. like that mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. like pour the water? They kind of look like koi. Yeah, you know, giant koi, and they they serve the purpose of uh, gargoyles, uh, which is something that a lot of people uh, get wrong in in the first analysis. A gargoyle, the word is actually derived from gargle, which was a spout, oh. a water spout. The, oh. the water used to come oh. out of their mouths. Um, but they were just features, and everybody was like, "Oh, well, you know, they're protectors. They're you know fighting evil." It's like, well, no, there there are gutter spouts, <laughs> in Ooh. in many cases. I mean, I think it grew into the more gothic definition that we know, but in in originality, it was the gargler, gargoyle. Because every anything that gargles is going to keep people away. Right. The weirdest story is apparently it was a sea monster that came up that's sane, came up into uh, uh, the uh, into Paris and just spat water into the city. And this man, uh, a saint, came and you know compelled it to leave. Wow. And that was the original gargler, hey. the gargoyle. And then they started making these spouts with you know the face and the water that shoots out of it. It wasn't actually a sea monster. It was just a sturgeon, yes, just a sturgeon. That, that spewed water because it was living in the sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> That's what I would imagine. Uh, and we actually have sturgeon here as well. We do indeed. Uh, which is on the list. So we have sturgeons that uh, are massive that live in the Savannah River. We I sure had, do. I had no idea. They are nuclear powered. They are <laughs> nuclear powered and they look like dinosaurs because they are. Right. Uh, I, I would assume that at least half of all sea monster sightings are sturgeon. <laughs> Because these things are barbed and scary and weird. And if you saw one swimming by your boat, mm-hmm. you would freak out. You'd yeah. be like, it had ridges and it was monstrous and it was gigantic. Because they can get very large. And for those of you who like animals, our sturgeon is the short-snooted 
Ew, the short sturgeon. Snooty. Really, is yeah. it? Well, yeah, it's cute. It is cute. They just got little tiny snoots, you know. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of odd animals that live in Savannah. Uh, we have the sturgeon. We have dolphins that like to hunt on land. Yes, you heard that right. Yes. Um, yeah, mutant dolphins. <laughs> But they are really cute. There's a photo of them, I think, JT. Yeah. They have I'm pink a, bellies. They're cute until yep. they jump up and eat you. They Well, yeah. I mean, oh, the photo well, did true. not make Bears the cut. Too. That's all right. I'm, I'm not putting it in there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, they kind of have pink bellies, our, our dolphins do. Yep. Um, so if you're not familiar with our dolphins, uh, they have basically evolved to essentially chase their prey if you will during low tide and they chase them till they run out of water and they have to fling themselves onto the shore yep. and to which the so dolphins cool, fling That's themselves so cool. i've seen it happen <laughs> yes <laughs> like when i go fishing it's so wicked and so um to which the dolphins fling themselves onto the shore and they eat the fish on the land and then they shimmy they their shimmy way they way back <laughs> And then they do it all over again. So, yes, as Trisha just said, land dolphins. Land dolphins. They, they yeah, don't don't hang out on the beach, uh, uh, the riverbed, uh, because you might just look like a tasty fish. Yeah, <laughs> don't go into the Savannah River in general. Yeah, no, I would. I never. Would, I never, never. Never go into the Savannah River. There is no reason to go into the Savannah River. Uh there's a quirk. We have a super deadly river. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's terrifying. It's a thick, murky, brackish nightmare of monsters like man eating dolphin. Mm hmm. Yeah. Snow said, yeah. dolphins and I can box any day. Orcas, too. These hands are rated E for all groups and dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Were you wronged by a dolphin? Bring it. And, well, and especially orcas, because you mentioned orcas, too. What happened where you. <laughs> where the seafaring mammals are on your bad side. <laughs> Please share the details. Um, yeah. So supposedly the dolphins have just evolved to do this. Mm. My bet is probably because the Savannah river is so murky. It is very murky. And mm -hmm. they probably are like, I can't, ca I can't see nothing. I can't see these fish. So I'm going to just, you know, well, up there. what it is, is that, uh, at low tide, you get a ton of mud, right? right. Yeah. So what, what they do is when all that water is concentrated, so is the bait. And so they're able to chase the bait onto the land while also diving onto the land. Right. Eat them sideways. Right. That's mm -hmm. that's how they do it. It's yeah. remarkable and uh, just unbelievable. It's really, really cool. And uh, one of the coolest things that I've ever actually seen. Lexi said immediately Google Savannah land dolphins. <laughs> Alex said I want land sharks. No land sharks. I'm down with land sharks. Sh sharks are fish. Yeah. Dolphins are mammals. That is true. So dolphins have a better chance of, of, of lasting a little longer out mm -hmm. of the water. So Eo said, noted, no swimming in the river. Yeah, yeah it will kill Although you. Although if you look into the river, <laughs> you. you kind of get the notion that you shouldn't, unless it's St. Patrick's Day and you're drunk, which oh, there's always somebody. There's like, always somebody. Who's like, I want to swim in the river. I said, please don't. Don't do not do that. Well, and that's the thing is those same people they ain't finding you because yeah. you know yeah. it's like no seriously i was uh w i was fishing the savannah river maybe uh th about two three months ago and i just dropped my bait in uh, and this was the closest to the bridge that i've actually fished um maybe a mile uh east and um i dropped my bait in and i didn't understand necessarily how strong the current was a couple feet down because you it doesn't look like no, there's a strong current up top, powerful. but when you drop that, when you drop your hook in, all of a sudden, it just gets yeah. taken. Like it's, I, I thought I had a. You fish. thought you had a fish on the line? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was I've like, heard Whoa. that before. My yeah. pole's bending. I'm like, this was fast, dumb. <laughs> it was completely not a fish. <laughs> it was not a fish. It was no. just a current. Yeah. It was just the vengeful, angry river. <laughs> Yep. Which was already vengeful and angry. And yep. then we started dredging it deeper because mm -hmm. we have these cargo ships that are coming into Savannah, um, which is why the undercurrent's so thick, because it is not like a, a sandy bottom no. where you can just walk your way in. It mm -hmm. is a whole drop off and yeah. mud, first off. So if you do ever get into some portion of the Savannah River, which is not advised, if you do, though, you will not be standing in that river no. for more than one reason. It is just mud and 
very squishy mud. Why are a lot of these quirks like deadly? Because. No, Welcome to Savannah. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have some stone stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the stone stairs of death? Yes, Bones. actually. Um, so the stone stairs of death are technically considered our historic stairs. But if you spend enough time in Savannah, you will learn that everybody calls it that because if you make one wrong move on those stairs, you are going down and yeah. it very well could break your neck. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I had a, a great uncle who was in the Navy. And I believe it was in the late 60s, fell down the steps and cracked his skull wide open and was reduced to like um, the mentality of a six year old for the rest of his life. Wow. wow. He had to live in an institution for the rest of his life. Good. And it was gracious. like just rolling down those stairs. Wow. Like, wow. Because the stairs are also jagged, sharp, uneven, different heights. <laughs> And, mm-hmm. and very, and, yeah. very small steps. Right, very small yeah. steps. It's 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 such a, a bizarre thing because most of those steps were made from ballast stone coming off of ships, so they were not measured. They were not like mm-hmm. picked for their appropriateness. Mm-hmm. They're picked for their proximity, how close they are. And so, yeah, uh, there are several of the, the the stone stairs of death that are just treacherous Mm -hmm. Um, because even even after a a, a period i think they started putting like cement um steps on top of the rocks but that really didn't change the like danger involved Mm -hmm. in going up and down those staircases yeah so really the um advice if you do want to go down to river street from bay street first off take a ramp because you can walk on the ramps um you'll basically see uh i think it's kind of like every other um street has a ramp and technically those are so that cars and trolleys can get Mm -hmm. down onto river street um but you can walk on the side of it and that is the much easier way to maneuver that because it is still kind of uneven so you could i was just about to say cobblestone will kill you if the stairs don't Right. Yeah, I've always marveled at women who wear high heels. Literally. Oh River my Street. god, I couldn't. Because I can't do it in sneakers. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Lord, you ain't playing. I you know, the progression of death in Savannah is this is this is kind of how you do it. You drink with Captain Morgan in Chippewa Square, you go down, you fall down the stairs, and if you make it past that and your head's all busted, you fall into the river. And that's how that's how that's how they usually go. And there are um many metal staircases which are a little more even keeled mm-hmm. than than the stone stairs. And there is um Several hotels that have elevators mm-hmm. that'll take you down to River Street level. And then there's one public elevator right next to the Hyatt that you can take down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always urge people to use the elevators, especially if they're going to be drinking. Yes. Um, you See, don't want to get tipsy and then take your chances on the then, stone stairs. <laughs> and then tip. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Snow said, Savannah possibly killing you is low, but never zero. Kind of like Florida. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Very true. Um, yeah. The Don't wear heels on River Street. I can't even tell you. I used to work for a different trolley company, and I uh, would be down on River Street every night, practically. And I can't tell you how many girls I've seen absolutely eat it with a wet willy. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wet willy is an establishment that serves alcohol. It's a drink. It's not somebody came up and stuck their pinky in their ear. <laughs> <laughs> but they are delicious and very strong. And if you again, the alcohol drink, not. The pinky in the ear. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, particularly the best way to fall down these stone stairs of death is after drinking a cola cab from Wet Willies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So you get a cola cab from Wet Willies, drink it with Captain Morgan in Chippewa Square, head to the stairs, fall down those, go right into the river. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Now, the uh, next one I want to bring up is the turtles on troop square yep (laughs) but these are not uh real turtles these are a metal turtle so troop square has a very interesting for Armillary sphere yeah armorally and and it's um, (laughs) and it's for all the astrological signs right an armillary sphere an armillary armillary. would be it's kind of like an astrolabe but it's an armillary an armillary god lord However you pronounce it, it's a it's a globe that will point out the um, the zodiac. Yep, and so um, it 
it's already cool for that if you're an astrology person. But if you look around the base, there are toidles. And uh, I love going to Troop Square because there is the church there, which we'll get into in a second of why that's a quirk. Um, there's a church there where the little old ladies that attend that church every holiday dress up the turtles on the statue with little outfits. Yes. Uh, little JT, hats. I will send you the photo that oh, yes. I have. So this. Please do. Uh, yeah, they put little hats on them. So like for Easter this year, they all had little Sunday church hats, <laughs> uh, which was super cute. Uh, they also uh, put, you know, Santa like Santa hats, hats yeah. on them. Um, they had witch hats last year for Halloween. Little green leprechaun hats. For yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Everything. They're very cute. Uh, so definitely if you are going to be in Savannah around a holiday, you need to go. Okay, I'll send it to you after, JT, and we, you can put yeah, it in. Um, but yeah, so definitely go see the Turtles of mm -hmm. Troop Square, because that is probably my favorite quirk. But on that same square, there is the church that you know decorates these turtles. But it's, it's not just Unitarian any church. Unitarian Universalist Church. Yes. Uh, it's not just any church, no. though. <laughs> it is the Jingle Bells Church. Right. It is you the Jingle Bells Church. The Jingle Bells Church. <laughs> Dashing through... The snow. Yep. And yes, Savannah's known for its snowfall. Yes. Well, and it was basically so um, Jingle Bells was written in that church, but the writer was not referring to Savannah. No. He was referring to Massachusetts, right? Yes. Yeah. He was referring to Boston, yeah. supposedly. Um, and supposedly he was just longing for home. And so he was missing the snow at Christmas time, but he wrote it in that church, and they still claim it. And the whole, his hometown's a little bitter about it mm -hmm. because they definitely mm -hmm. uh, challenge whether or not Jingle Bells was written in Savannah because it's all about ooh, publication dates and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. they're they're like, there's no way it was Savannah. But he was the musical director of that church at the time that Jingle Bells was written. Hmm. Fabs said. The stairs 1,000% whooped my ass last time I was in Savannah. <laughs> 10 out of 10 do not recommend. They will do that. <laughs> That's the most deadly thing in Savannah. It is, by far. But I, I agree with that, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. I think that is the, the most deadly. Uh, the river, you can argue the river is the most deadly because you, can also you, argue you fall that in, it's over. Savannah traffic. That's true. It has very little concern for your mortality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there are other deadly things that you might encounter uh, in Savannah. But that's oh. not what the show's about. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> well, I'm just saying deadly objects that you could encounter, including a nuclear bomb yep. at Tybee. It's you true. heard it here. <laughs> oh, hold on. Before we get into the nuclear bombs, Fabs added Wet Willies was also involved. I'm yes. telling you. <laughs> yep. I'm telling yep. you it's the recipe. It's the it's recipe. a combination. It's a idea. Yeah. <laughs> It's the recipe for for the uh, the death, um, but <laughs> back to the nuclear bomb. Yes, you heard that correct. Um, now, Chris, I know you know the actual story a little bit better of how it happened, but essentially they lost a it's, nuclear bomb. It's a broken arrow situation. Yeah. Uh, they were transporting it. Uh, I believe they were flying it to uh, Florida, and uh, they ran into interference and trouble in with the plane, and they jettisoned a. 15 ton nuclear bomb into the uh it, it, it's actually in the riverbed just uh north of tybee mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and it seems like just recently there was some belief that uh, a, a pair of divers had found mm -hmm. it but i never yeah it never surfaced there's never more information about it but it, it was this nuclear bomb that was dropped right off the uh the coast of of tybee and a lot of the conversation was whether or not the um, plutonium core was engaged because the belief was when you're transporting it, you don't put the core in. You put a dummy core in, and that would keep it from having a nuclear reaction. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people believe that uh, they were not operating uh, under regulation or that regulation was passed after the fact. <laughs> Either way... There's a nuclear bomb <laughs> just Somewhere. sitting in the water. Uh, and you would think that given the amount of time, you know, the 50 plus years amount of time, 60 plus now, mm -hmm. um, 
we would have been able to find it, but they've they've tried. They've done you know, like <laughs> a deep radar sonar. They've like, done all this, this is stuff. where we dropped it, right? Yeah, we dropped it right <laughs> here. You should be able to find a nuclear bomb. Uh, turns out we're not that good at finding our, our lost nuclear bombs. Um, and I think if you did a deep dive, you would find that there are probably more of these than you're ever going to be comfortable knowing about. Because I want to say one fell in South Carolina and detonated, but not the, it didn't have its nuclear core. It was just the explosion oh, wow. and left a huge crater in, in South Carolina. No way. JT's I, I believe like, that's true. I'm sure the fishing's good in that. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I think it's just a crater. It's on land. There's no oh, it's on land. Oh. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang. <laughs> Goodness well, gracious. Yeah, and if you drive around Savannah, you'll sometimes see people who have bumper stickers. Yes, that's right. Tybee Ty Bomb Squad. Yeah, the Tybee Bomb oh, Squad. Oh, yeah, the Tybee Bomb Squad, yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's that's wild they dropped on it. Do we know where in South Carolina? I, I think it's an easy lookup. It's <laughs> yeah. not far. Yeah. I think we could drive in a it's day. probably, I mean, yeah. did they call it Columbia? Oh my god! No. Anyway, we. Uh, I don't like Columbia. I think we're anyway. blowing the pair of junky minds. Oh yes, there's a nuclear bomb <laughs> off the coast of Tybee that we've known about. We've known about. Like, yes. since I, I've, I've been here thirty years, and it was old news then. <laughs> yeah. It's then they're like, oh, yeah. It's like, why aren't we doing something? Ah, what happens if it goes off? We all die. You know, it was never like a uh, an issue for yeah. anyone. No one. They're like, pour another drink. You know, that was uh, which is the Savannah motto for anything is pour yeah. another drink. So my, uh, my yeah. history teacher at Savannah Arts uh, did a whole class on it. <laughs> did he really? He really did. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Lina. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lina. There you go. Um, it does sound very Murica. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it. And I mean, honestly, Tybee's the type of place, too, that you might not always want to get in the water anyways. It's pretty aggressive. Right. We've been on a double and red flag for like a month. Wh so. How the dolphins evolved the way they did? Uh, nuclear waste. Nu that's exactly. <laughs> that was my other theory. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. Well, and that's also why the sturgeon are so big. Yes, um, that's right. You know. They've been eating radioactive debris for the last 50, 60 years. Because aren't they considered trash fish? They like. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're scavengers, not scavengers. Um, what is the word? Is it trash? There's a word for it. There's a word. Trash fish? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was saying, aren't sturgeon technically trash fish? Absolutely not. Yeah. Oh. oh. No? No. They're really? not. They're, they're not, not trash fish, fish. though. You said trash fish? Yeah. Like a catfish? Well, like, no. I, like they eat everything, right? No, that doesn't matter. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. They're talking about they're talking about like gar and uh, oh. catfish when you say trash fish. No, sturgeon's absolutely not a trash fish. Snow, you still have not explained why you want to throw hands with all dolphins and orcas. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have not given the explanation. Yeah. So, um, for those people who are just listening, we we do have a, a Patreon member who is challenging all uh, aquatic well dolphins and, and orcas. And orcas. Um, sea mammals as it were um snow how do you feel about beluga whales still gonna pop them right in the big squishy forehead <laughs> in the sonar <laughs> but they'll never see it coming so real fast just uh just wanted to go ahead and read on february 5th 1958 a b-47 bomber dropped a 40 uh 7600 pound nuclear bomb into waters off tybee island georgia after colliding with an f-86 fighter jet there it was wow that's it it was an actual collision. It's a collision. Woof. Oh, yeah. Woof, I say. Woof. There's so much sky. How are you? How are you? <laughs> There's so much sky. <laughs> it seems like hitting another plane takes an That's immense so amount of skill. Lord. It does. Lord. No, it really does. Uh, um, so, so many other places you could be. So this next one I'm going to tell you all about. Um, this is a true Savannah um, uh -huh. uh, knowledge. There is a local man who I would wager is a local favorite of Savannah's, and that is a man named Sir D.P. Frazier. So Sir D.P. Uh, yep. is a man who oftentimes you can find sitting in squares. Um, he used to always sit in Johnson Square. He Now I've been seeing him in Chippewa Square, but he will sing you a song about Savannah that he wrote. And yes, we have, ask him. 
to do it. He loves doing yes, it. Yes. If you ever see a man, he is usually in some type of like overalls sort of situation, usually wearing a hat of some sorts. And you'll usually hear him singing to himself anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he is definitely a Savannah classic for sure. And if yep, we can yep. find the recording of uh, Sir Deepy's, you know, uh, song, we will insert it. it. Yep. Perfect. Here it is. Now, uh, next one that we're going to talk about is a local business that was owned by a pretty well-known uh, man named Mr. Bradley. Now, uh, Mr. Bradley's family has owned a lock and key shop for how long now? Over 100 years. Yep. It's so over 100 years. I want to say that they were in that spot since the late 1800s. The property is owned by the family, um, and they did not bow to the incredible pressure from so many different businesses. and Because it is in prime location. Mm -hmm. That land is probably worth $20 million if you know, if, if a penny, it's it's worth a lot. It's off it's of right, right square. Right off of yeah. right square. Yeah. One block off of Broughton, directly on the corner of State. Yep, that's State Street. State and um and Drayton. Incredible location. Has its own parking. Is is a uh, immense place. The building itself is chock full of Savannah history. Yes. Some of the most amazing things from the last. 200 years of Savannah history are stockpiled, not only in that building, but they own the building next to it where there's an Italian restaurant, the upper two floors full, chock full of memorabilia of Savannah history mm -hmm. to include like a, a whole collection of those little uh, mechanical rides that used to sit in front of yeah. stores. Yes. So Deanie, uh, Mr. Bradley, uh, who, who recently passed away, um, he he would put out the call and he would say that he would pay top dollar for anything that was significant to Savannah history. And he was able to get like the, all of the bar stools and the bar from the um, civil rights sit-in. Wow. He actually purchased them and had them. Incredible. Um, he bought like uh, the broken <laughs> bell from, uh, from the main bell tower of the monumental church. He really did love Savannah so much that he wanted to preserve as much of it as possible, uh, which turned it turned the, the, the entire property into kind of like a hoarding situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you get that sensation that when you walk in, it's like, I am standing in mm -hmm. history. I'm just surrounded yes. by history. Yeah. But it is very cool to see. Shout out to Eni for reminding us about this one in particular, because I didn't think about this, Cork, when we were planning the episode, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the sign, um, the, the Bradley sign says, we sharpen anything but your yep. wits. Yep. Um, Let's see, luggage repaired. We fix anything but a broken heart. Mm -hmm. So you got to love it. So it's interesting because uh, one member of every generation of the family would take over for Bradley's. And right now I think it's Deanie's nephew is um, is running it right now. Uh, but uh, the other members of the family, because the Bradley family is wealthy and, and very affluential, mm -hmm. um, the other members would go off to be doctors and lawyers and all these things. And so uh, I sat down with, with um, Mark uh, um, Bradley, and we were talking about how his father would run this run mm -hmm. the locksmith. And one of the things that he often did was he cut the rings off of um, uh, local uh, youth, and I guess young adults, who when they play basketball, they would jam their finger, and their finger would swell up, and their rings would start to cut into their fingers. So they... They would come in, and he would just do it for free. He'd just like Dang. pop them off and cut them off. Well, his his son Mark became a lawyer, <laughs> and he was like, "You can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> do not do that. You are so liable for so many things mm -hmm. the second you do that." But his you know his father was just like, "Wow, you know, Click. just pop them off." Um, and that was the kind of person they and that that whole business was just that kind mm -hmm. of business where right. where it was very familial, very local. Um, I got to spend a lot of time in Bradley Lock and Key because. I was in the theater. Uh, our theater was half a, uh, half a street away from the um, from Bradley's. But whenever you needed a weird prop, you just go over to Dini and be like, "Hey, do you wouldn't happen to have like an old cash register?" It's like, All right, here. He wouldn't happen to have, you know, yeah, you know, when you want something, uh, nine times out of ten they had it, and we were always locked out of something. And yeah. they would come and unlock. It's so cool. Anything. It's very There's cool. tons it's, of keys it's everywhere. Really cool. And Milton Bradley was killed by the I-95 killer. He That's was. That's another. That was uh, Deanie's brother. Unfortunate yep. quirk that we have. And he used to work in um, in Bradley's. He used to uh, clean up. 
mm-hmm. the, the the space. Yep, yep. So we did get the backstory on the dolphin hate. Um, just real quick, uh, Snow said, I love belugas. So there you go, oh, Chris. Well, good. I love all whales, but dolphins? Nope. I punched one when I was a kid at SeaWorld, actually. <laughs> so this is a long standing <laughs> wow. feud with dolphins. Continuity. They are a uh, uh, continuation, excuse me. They are so sadistic and just be messing with whales and sharks for no reason. Sharks and whales did nothing to deserve it. Also, dolphins include killer whales slash orcas. They are the main offenders. Wow. Although, I am digging how orcas are taking down yachts. Yeah. I find that fascinating because it does seem like a concerted effort. And the fact that they're targeting yachts, really, it's like... What's going on? What do you know mm-hmm. that we don't know? What's the orcas really said, "Eat the rich." They and mean it. They're right. following through, <laughs> y'all. And uh, here's a uh, picture of Sir Deepy. That is Sir yep. Deepy with Sir the Georgia Deepy. Queen behind him. Yeah, the Georgia Queen. So, all right, there you go. Good um, stuff. Next one. You want to talk, uh, Chris? You want to tell the story about the uh, design of the Asbury Church? <laughs> So this one's odd. Uh, you'll see on uh, bumper stickers all around town. If you go to the Asbury Church, it's on their main sign. Um, there is a clown picture, uh, basically the booster club of the church. Uh, this was in the early 90s. And I think they still do this. But in the early 90s, one of the main things that they were doing to help raise revenue was they would make these cute little uh, clown dolls. And uh, the pastor at the time, Billy Hester, had just come to town, and he sat down with me and a friend. We owned a uh, graphic design business. And he was like, I would like a logo that featured these clowns. And so on the spot, at lunch, I kind of scribbled on a piece of paper. I want to say it was a napkin, but it might have just been a piece of paper. Um, I just scribbled this thing out, and I kind of like slid it over to him and said, you want something like this? And he's like, oh, that's great. That's perfect. And so I'm like, great. I'll go and you know work on it, a drafting table and all that good stuff. Um, when I returned with a, you know, finalized product, he had already taken the drawing from the meeting and turned it into their logo and it is still their logo. Some 30 years later, it's still there and it's still on everything. They branded everything with it. And I'm like, that was a like ballpoint pen drawing on, you know, just a, a sketchy sketch of it. Um, and he, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's their logo. Uh, and, uh, and he's always quick to like point out that it's me whenever I'm in the same room as him. He's like, oh yeah, he's the guy who came up with the logo. And I'm like, I gotta play it down. That is, you know, <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I'm glad you liked it, but it, it does feel really incomplete to me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's how I, uh, that's how I roll. I <laughs> turn in rough drafts and people print them. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yeah. There you go. Chris is, uh, he's just littered throughout the entire city of Savannah. Sounds like a terrifying <laughs> logo. It kind of is in a way um, because they were, they're very much like jingles, actually. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of have that uh, that gesture look to them. Super creepy. Um, so, Jay, do you want to pull up some of the uh, submissions that uh, Amy sent us? Yeah, um, well, we got, uh, we have the, uh, the dolphin fish. We did that one. Yeah. We already did those gutters? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even show a freaking picture. Oh. Sorry, I'm doing like there 300 yeah. things. They're trying to tell us that that's a dolphin. Yeah. Snow, do you feel like punching that? I don't think so. It doesn't look like uh, a dolphin. That is true. That's so funny. Oh, side, uh, side note, one that just popped into my head. So when <laughs> President Obama left office he his first meal he wanted to eat after leaving office was in savannah he wanted to eat at mrs wilkes that's right so he flew right on over to savannah just to eat at mrs wilkes uh and if you've never eaten at mrs wilkes that is a whole quirk in its own it really their is. whole setup and you know. mrs wilkes uh was a boarding house and so they actually serve their food uh you know family style which is you sit at a table and you don't have a choice of it's not a menu they just put food on the table and you pass it around and mm-hmm. it and it inspires conversation you have to talk to everybody just to get your food on your plate um and it is a wonderful experience i i definitely like it's promote that to anybody who's looking for a quintessential savannah experience absolutely eating at mrs wilkes is one of them but what a lot of people don't know is that savannians don't necessarily eat 
at Mrs. Wilkes, they can go around to the back door and knock on the door and they'll get little takeout bags. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, uh, because there's a line. (laughs) There's always a line that just stretches out into the street. Massive line. Um, And so, you know, uh, just be prepared if you want that experience. Come early or be prepared to stand in line. Yeah, and uh, it's mostly because they're only open during the week and you have to get there before they open at 11 and it's also cash only. They are so, cash only, yeah. Yeah, so if yep. you do go to Mrs. Wilkes, but it is beautiful. And it's a really, even even in the dead of summer when it's super hot, it is very beautiful because you're right on Jones Street. Yep. Um, yes, uh, beautiful street, Jones Street. And uh, you get to know the people that you're in line with really well. Mm-hmm. Because these are generally dedicated people to the concept, you know, <laughs> you're not yeah. dealing with, you know, uh, most people who don't want to stand in that line won't stand in the line. So the people who are there are usually pretty good natured about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so we wanted to chock full this episode with a bunch of quirks that you come see yourself. So we also asked Eni because she walks this city almost every single day. And uh, and she said a couple that we haven't mentioned um, the guy who used to walk around Savannah with religions, religious <laughs> signs like Satan equals slavery and death. Yeah. I yeah. think he still does that yeah. every once in a while. But and, he might uh, I think it said the sign. news is a lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, was a part of his, his whole thing. And uh, I once uh, stopped him to talk to him about what he was trying to promote. And um, all in all, he was not nearly as crazy as I thought he would be. But he was still pretty... Uh, pretty definitive about mm-hmm. about Satan's return and uh, mm-hmm. the, the peril that we're all in. There's also a man that rides his bike. Oh, the flag all, guy? Yes, the flag guy. <laughs> uh, flag guy! <laughs> yes. Have miss flag guy! So the flag guy, uh, nobody knows <sighs> why do he does this, guy? As at least I don't know. Um, but he has... Like, you know those flags that they fly at, like, car dealerships? Yeah, giant flag. Yeah, giant. You know, massive. Massive American flags. Think of the biggest flag you can put on a road. And so he has a pole that he has attached to his bicycle that is flying one of those enormous flags. You have to imagine his legs are the most muscular thing on Earth. Yeah, Absolutely. Because he's, he's fighting wind resistance on what seems to be, like... 20 square miles of fabric. <laughs> it's just insane. Yeah. And he will ride that bike all around the historic I'm district. I'm shocked when I up see Up to him. like Duren. Right. You'll yeah, see him coming down Duren and that, you know, that's, you know, miles and miles away. You're like, how did you get yeah. here? Yeah. It's, it's impressive. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there were, there was a time when there were very like recognizable and notable homeless people in Savannah that you kind of knew by their quirk, by their strange, you know, behavioral patterns. Um, one was a man who used to shake his hands like this and he'd walk up and down the streets with his hands like this. And you're like, not certain what his, his mental, he, he was not a, he didn't, uh-huh. he never begged. He never really, um, he, he, he was just always walking the streets with this very long ZZ top beard and, and shaking his hands like this. And one day we were driving downtown and he was just walking with his hands in his pocket, just mm-hmm. like, barreling down the street and i was like wait what's he doing you know it was so weird it was so weird to see him out of that and then my friend was like i guess it's too cold to be crazy (laughs) 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 like that's fair okay um yeah and intriguingly enough my sister moved into like this apartment building which is now luxury apartments but at the time it was like we're sorry you have to live here apartments (laughs) Um, and we were in this building, and um, and the guy lived on my sister's floor. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's not homeless. He's, oh, wow. He, 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 he just walks around. He lives in this building. There wow. you go. Yeah. Um, another one that she mentioned was uh, she said, there's also this pharaoh guy who I just randomly see around Savannah. He's always Oh, the dressed- pharaoh. Yeah. Yes, he, she in the said white you pharaoh. would know. Absolutely. I didn't know. You have never seen the Pharaoh? No. So uh, the most common he? place that I run into the Pharaoh is the downtown Kroger's. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the city the downtown is Kroger's. weird, y'all. And he wears, so <laughs> I, I, there's a church in town that is um, Egyptian based. Oh. Uh, it is a black church and it does, it, it, and all of their service and everything seems to have an Egyptian base. And I want to say that he might be a prominent okay. figure in that church. Uh, because he's not. There's nothing about him that seems off-putting, except he's wearing a, a stark white, laced in gold pharaoh outfit. 
like from head to toe, robes and a picture of him. thing. Wow. Uh, I don't have. I I, I, I you didn't I, have one. I would mm. be surprised, you know, because it's it's just one of those things. Yeah, you see, and and to to make matters worse is the first time that I saw him was maybe a day or two after I saw the clown. The clown hasn't been around in a while, but the clown was a fully dressed up clown, like full clown regalia, and he rode a bike around downtown. That's horrifying. Horrifying, absolutely horrifying. The first time I saw him, I'm pretty sure I screamed <laughs> because it didn't make sense. My brain was like, no, no, thank you, no. Because it's like, oh, he's going to a party at 9.30 at night. No, yeah. I don't think so. He's dr- And uh, so the first time I saw him was, uh, I was in the playground of the Colonial Park Cemetery giving a tour and he's riding down the, that alleyway and I'm just like, is that a clown? And he's got his little honky clown horn and he's like, I'm like, no, sir. No, sir. They're not allowed. Goodness gracious. Ghosts all day long, clowns not so much. (laughs) They're also um, totally separate uh, side note of, uh, but I just thought of another one. There is a dog water fountain in Troop Square as well. There is a dog water fountain. Yeah, it's got a human water fountain. If you go a little bit lower, there is a water (laughs) fountain that is literally there so that your dog doesn't get dehydrated. It's a dog town. Yes. There's no question about it. Yeah, I think we, you know, I sometimes wonder why we have uh, all these quirks, and it, I think it's because we're that we're the size of not as big, and we're not big enough to be a like full blown city, but we're not small enough to be a town, and so I think that there's just enough people w- and where we can have these types of quirks, but then also we're we're small enough to. Um, like notice them there's uh, yeah and there's no resistance to them mm-hmm. there's no one trying to clean the street that's well, it yeah to a degree i would say in the <laughs> yeah. last 20 years it's it's def- there's there's been more of a push to kind of yeah tamp down on the weirdness but when i first moved here you know i moved here in the early 90s and so we were still like almost everyone i knew was was involved or around midnight in the garden couldn't yeah hear. they knew all the people um, the guy uh, that they based uh, Luther Driggers, who, <laughs> who in the book, you know, had flies on strings and had a vial of poison. Everybody knew him, you know, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, he hated the way they portrayed him because, he, you know, he didn't go around like that. Um, it turned out that it was like a Halloween costume that he put flies on his mm. clothes. But yep. John Barron made it seem like he did it every day. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, but still, it was so normal. It's so normal <laughs> that... Um, Minerva, the um, hoodoo priestess or uh, root doctor, uh, was regularly seen downtown. Mm-hmm. But she got so hounded by people who had read the book. And then, mm. of course, when the movie came out, she had to go into hiding because she never wanted to be yeah. famous. She wanted to do what she did. And so she had to move to South Carolina because mm-hmm. it was just too hard for her to maintain a business downtown. As a matter of fact, Almost every hoodoo shop in Savannah had to close because they turned into touristy things. Tourists would go in and be like, yeah. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. It's like, mm-hmm. well, no, those are for our practice. This is for our, our religion. Please don't you know, take the things we need to do our rituals. Um, but you can't explain that away. And mm-hmm. so we lost, we lost a lot of culture because of the attention Savannah got. Um, and it's fascinating because there was a time when it was just perfectly legit uh, I want to say in Factors Walk, there was a store, and I'll never forget it, it had a, a devil on the door and all this like stuff. And it was specifically painted that way to keep uh, prying eyes away, to keep the Christians who, are, who might you know, wander in there uh, away from it. But you know, once, once, the, uh, once the craze started where everybody was like, oh, this is such a quirky little place. Oh, it's just like New Orleans. Let's go into this shop. Uh, and they and to their credit, they shut the shops down instead of cashing in. I always thought that that Dang. was so remarkable that mm-hmm. many of these shops chose to close rather than cater to people who did not share their faith or did not respect their faith. And I'm like, that's that's a big difference. Mm-hmm. You know, when you it, when you got these people who are now you know practicing more on a one on one directly with the people who need these items to complete the tenets of their faith mm-hmm. versus People who are like, oh, look, I got a voodoo keychain. It's like, that's a Grigri bag. Please put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. 
Yep. And then I think to uh, I think to end it out, um, we should talk about uh, even though she's not a quirk, uh, she um, was uh, different for the time. Uh, yeah. We we'll talk about Lady Chablis that because she influence. is our. She's yeah. kind of like her. Uh, like she's like Savannah's mascot. You Patron know? saint. Yeah, absolutely. Patron saint Savannah. Yeah, she. Uh, so Lady Chablis, uh, it was a character all absolutely. on her own. Um, so she was a very open um, trans woman, which. For the time she was living in Savannah, that just was not a thing. Yeah. Um, and so she would perform comedy at Club One, which is the gay bar here in Savannah. And uh, still to this day, they have her photo up in the yep. dressing room. They have uh, her quotes that I'm not going to say because yeah. this is a family friendly <laughs> she, podcast. She was, she but was, she was very uh, blue humored. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because even in the movie, they t- toned her down so much. She got to play herself. She demanded in the it. movie, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. you know that's that tells you dope. everything yeah. you need to know about the character. Amen. Yeah. Um, I got to work with her four times, and I hung out with her a lot because she was a fixture in downtown Savannah, and she was amazing. She was always amazing. Uh, so I, every time I worked with her, I was a part of a puppet company, and we had a puppet called uh, Formica, Formica Dinette Washington, who was a loosely based. Mm-hmm. version of Lady Shipley. Yeah. And that always caused a little friction. Um, I mean, a good-hearted friction, but it was still always like, oh, why do we keep booking these things where we go and stand on stage with Lady Shibli, who is a much beloved, and we are you know, puppets. We are puppets. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Lady Shibli, uh, she has since passed, but uh, yeah. she is still very, very honored uh, in Savannah, and uh, if you ever read Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil and uh, or watch the movie, yep, you are familiar with her work. And she has her own book, Hiding mm-hmm. My Candy, which is a great book if you want to you know read about. Because talk about a tumultuous time. We're talking like 70s, 80s drag queen in Savannah, Georgia. You know, um, it was an immense like uh, documentation of how Savannah and still to this day, Savannah's uh, gay community and gay pride is just phenomenal uh, for being set in the deep South. Yeah. You know, it mm-hmm. is, it is this incredible um, Mecca for uh, openness, for tolerance, for all of these things. And I think, uh, you know, Lady Chablis was a perfect example of that movement and how, um, and how the struggle was absolutely real, but mm-hmm. but overcome to a great degree. Yeah, right? we know what it is here. It was, it was it's, true. Yeah. it's true. Absolutely. Yeah, so we love Lady Chablis, uh, and she's a great note to end it on. But hopefully y'all enjoyed this uh, ramblings, uh, the quirks of Savannah, and maybe that'll make you want to come visit Savannah sometime. Um, yeah, we made it with only minor talk of death. Minor, um, talk, of minor death. talk of death. I'm and not a single y'all. ghost. Not a single ghost. We, we a lot of orca and Got dolphin close. hate, Got though. Close. Got close. But yeah. <laughs> a lot of orca and dolphin hate. Um, yeah. Lord, so. L is not going to like this yeah. episode. Oh, <laughs> yeah. L is going to send a discography. Yes, she <laughs> will. <laughs> all right. That sounds good. But yeah. Um, thank you all so much for listening to this. If you made it all the way through this episode. Um, but w- if you uh, have any ghost stories on a different note, if you have any ghost stories that you want to send to us, go ahead and send it to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Also, if you don't already follow us on social media, you can follow us under Haunted City Podcast on pretty much every single platform you can think of. But with that, My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all.